Well, I thought it was about time we got started doing a little Christmas decorating on the porch of the dollhouse. So this week, join me as we make this really simple little project of stacked boxes for a porch sign. Stay tuned and see how fun and easy this one is to do. All right, in order to create all three of our boxes, we are going to use one eight and a half by 11 sheet of white cardstock. And this is a fairly thick cardstock like you would make greeting cards out of. And I have, I'm working on my self-healing um, cutting mat that I, I buy at the fabric store. I use the front side that's got the grid on it. I use that when I'm sewing. I flip it over and use the back side that's plain whenever I'm crafting. That way it keeps the front side nice and clean for sewing and I still have all the properties of that nice board, that nice cutting mat to use for crafting also. So, And I'm using a, craft, a um, rotary cutting ruler also to mark because it's just easier. I can see through it. So I'm marking down for the first one an inch and a quarter and the dimensions will be in the blog post and I'll try to remember to put a notation on the screen but I don't always remember. I'm going to make three lines that are each an inch and a quarter apart because we want to make a nice sturdy box. And this will be the bottom of our stack of boxes. Now if you wanted to do this for an indoor decoration for your dollhouse, I'm probably I think I would cut down the size of the boxes a little bit because this is pretty big because it's designed to go on the outside. All right, so that's the beginning of this. Now we're going to measure over a half inch from one edge and draw a line up and down through those three. Now we're going to put an X right here and right here and we're going to draw lines like this. This is just to remind me where to cut when I get ready to cut. <clears throat> now we're going to go, excuse, my sinuses are draining yet again today. Not sure what's going on with them. All right, so now I'm measuring from that last line I drew, I'm measuring over one and a quarter inches again. And that makes the first panel. I'm going to do it again. Two panels. We need to have a total of four panels here. Make sure you're lining all your lines up that you've already drawn so you know that everything is nice and straight. And this is easier when you're not doing it on camera. That's three panels, so now we've got to do the last panel. We're going to have a little bit extra at the end of each one of these so you can have that extra paper for something else. All right, that's our first box drawn. Now we're going to drop down Oh, about, I'll probably drop down about a half inch. You don't have to drop down a lot. We're just, I don't want to cut the next one right against this one. I want a little bit of extra space in between. And that's going to be throw away. And actually, I can draw this half inch line all the way down my paper. Because I'm going to keep a consistent half inch tab on all three boxes. Now this layer, the boxes are the box is one inch. So I'm going to make three lines that are one inch apart. And now Starting at this half inch mark, we're going to go over an inch and we're going to draw four one inch panels for this box. So I am going to go ahead and draw all four of these and then I'll come back before I start the smallest box. Alright, so those are all drawn in and now once again we're going to put an X and an X I'm going to draw my little marks. Now I like to start at the bottom to do the last box. That way I've got 
what I know is a nice straight edge. And for this one, I'm going up three-fourths of an inch. See, each box is getting just a little bit smaller, a quarter inch smaller than the one above it. So we're going to go three times at three-fourths of an inch. And then, I bet you've already guessed what we're going to do next. We are going to go over here and draw four panels at three-fourths of an inch. This is kind of like our moving boxes that we made a few months ago, except a different style of top and bottom, because these are not going to be, open, going to be made to open and close. These we are going to glue shut and then... Um, glue them together <clears throat> for our decoration. All right, now once again, X, X, and now <clears throat> you can score these now or after you cut them out. I'm actually going to cut these apart from the paper and once again I'll do the first one for you and show you what I'm doing and then I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of it off camera so that you don't have to sit here and watch me do the exact same thing over and over. I've got a notch out of my ruler. ruler this is something where I'm at. If you run into that, just go ahead and fold it down. Come on, what's going on here? There we go. Then we're going to cut this part off because that is extra. We don't need that part. We need one, two, three, four panels. go off to be used for another project. Now, I am going to cut this part. I'm trying to get lined up and I've got the camera out quite a ways from that last step I see. So I will zoom you in a little further before we go to the next, to the gluing together part. Now you could cut these out with scissors if you want to. You don't have to use a knife. I just find it much quicker and easier to get straight edges with my craft knife. All right, I am going to go ahead and cut the other two boxes free. And when that is done, I will come back and we will score the boxes and get them decorated and ready to go. All right, I've got all three boxes cut free from the sheet of paper. Now I'm going to score on all of these lines. Now these lines are going to be on the inside of our box. I've just got a table knife here. You just want to make kind of a dent so that this will fold nicely. And I'm only going to score one on camera and then I'll do the other two off camera so you don't have to watch. And you can use either side of your knife, whatever you're most comfortable with. You could even use the back of a craft knife if you're comfortable with that. And sometimes it helps to do that too. To kind of bend it up against your straight edge. Just make sure these lines are nice and straight. And what this does is it kind of pre-creases the paper and makes it want to fold so you don't get the cracking. Usually I fold towards, then away, and then back towards again. That way I know that it's going to back and forth a couple of times so that you've got a good fold. And then also with the side of your knife, kind of do that. We're going to go up 
coming down on these vertical lines. Oopsie. Stay put. If it slides, just slide it back where it goes. Don't worry too much about it. And this is easier when I can have my head directly over, which is another reason I'm going to do this off camera too. And then once again, fold back and forth. Trying to keep this strip in the middle clean. Now this next step I find easier with scissors on this size, but you can do it with scissors or with your knife. You're going to cut those lines that you scored down here on this bottom and also the top. Don't cut past that line there. And I will try to have photos of this after it's been cut on the blog post. There it goes like that now. So I am going to do the same thing with the other two boxes and when that's done I'll come back and we can go to the next step. All right, as you can see I've got all three of these now scored, pre-bent, and the edge of the flaps trimmed. And what, they're, what we're going to do eventually, we're going to glue these together like this. Pretty much like that. We're going to make a box. Um, but before we do that, we need to decorate them. So this will be the back. So this corner, two from e either of these two can be your front. And I need my pencil and I need, so this is the bottom one. So this is going to have our Y on it. So start out with a pencil. And make sure you're happy with your design. I'm going to make a line here and here. Do that. All right, I like that. Now, I also need, and I've got a small ruler here, these two are going to be our sides, and we need to mark the top and the bottom so that we'll know where to put our um, ribbon that we're going to add. So since this one is an inch and a quarter, that means I need to find the 5 eighths, which this is a half, so right here. And I'm going to do it at the bottom fold too. This one I got some lines on when I was trying to score it, so hopefully those won't show too much. Be a little more careful than I was there, I guess, is what I should say. And that looks to be in the middle. I'm going to put that off to the side while I mark the next one. This is our one inch one. I am going to, for our O, now you could draw, you could make an O. I'm going to make a snowflake. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the very center of this square over here with a very light, whoops, didn't quite get to the corner. There we go. This will help me to make sure it is centered, hopefully. Now remember, you're doing this in pencil first so that you can erase. So our snowflake is going to go here. We are going to, I'm going to go ahead and utilize one of these lines. And normally I wouldn't draw this dark, but because I want you guys to see it, I'm going to draw a little darker. So there's the first one. Now we need three on each, one, two, three, four, six. So we need two over here. Then a 
erase any extra lines and see how you like what you drew. This is the time to make any adjustments to what you just drew. So that's too long. Now, if you don't want to draw these on, you could probably find stickers or rubber stamps and do your designs that way. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, this is right. All right. And then just I'm going to make. Yeah, this will be fine. All right, I will finish that off camera. Then I'm going to do marks on this one. At a half inch. And again, over on this one at a half inch. Now we have our top box. So this one. And this was three fourths of an inch, so we need a three eighths inch line. So that will be one, two, three. One, two, three edge. And this one. And if these aren't perfect, it's okay. We don't have to be absolutely perfect. All right. I am going to get these neatened up, make sure everything is where I want it, and get my pen ready, and then I'll be right back. To make this go with my Beachside Bungalow, I am going to use blue as my accent color. You could use red, you could use green, you can use any color you want. You can even do the boxes in a different color and use white if you've got a white pen. So what I've got is just a big marker. It's a big permanent marker. It's an alcohol marker. If you've got Copics, if you've got Sharpies, if you've got... Arteza makes some beautiful alcohol markers. Any alcohol marker will work on this. I like those because once they're dry, they don't go anywhere. So I'm going to trace over my pencil lines and this is a fine point now like I said earlier you could use stickers or rubber stamps but I'm trying to keep this low cost for you guys now I did go through and I put a circle around this so that I know how far out to take my lines And you can, like I said, I'm going to erase the pencil lines later. Ran a little, that's okay. All right, now, oops. be sure and put the cap on your alcohol marker once you're done. And let's see if I have any, any lines there. Let's see if this is, I think this is going to be dry enough to. And I'm sure you guys will do a much better job on your snowflake than I did because you are not going to be doing it under camera. All right, now I'm going to go grab my clamps, which are right over here. And we are going to start gluing our boxes together. I'm going to put a little bit of just regular tacky glue out on my tray. Toothpick 
take it out. We're just going to put glue on the tab. One nice thing about this project is it's a lot bigger than some of the other projects I've been doing lately. You guys wonder why I get out from under camera. Um, I don't know if you can tell in my videos, but how small my work area is. On a lot of the food videos I'm doing, my cell phone is literally bigger than my work space on my tile. That's why it's so hard to stay under camera. Oh, I forgot to fold that. Oh. Line that edge up and clamp. And I should have got two clamps for that one. I'll have to go get a second one once I get these going. And I want that glue to dry before I go on to the next step. So I'm just going to do the same thing, spreading the glue. In fact, I'm going to spread the glue on this one too. Tacky glue, if you spread it and let it sit for a few seconds, it actually works a little better. those edges stay lined up because this will determine how straight your box is. If your box is, if you're off on this seam, your whole box will be crooked. And also try to make sure no glue slips down inside the box and glues the box shut. That's why I'm only putting just a very thin coat of glue there. Alright, so this glue needs to set up, and when this is dry, I'll be back and we'll go on to assembling the boxes. Alright, you may notice a change here. I hated the snowflake I had done earlier, so I made a new box and I used just a pen from my desk. And I am much happier with this one. So now we need to make our boxes. And what we are going to do, we are going to keep this tab the size that it is. So I'm going to fold it down like that. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to cut off just a little bit off of each of these others. That way there will be just a little more room inside of there. The amount isn't really important. It's not going to show. It's just going to make this go a little bit better and that was a miscut. All right. So I've got some glue and I've got a toothpick. I've also got some super glue just in case I need it. I don't think I'll need it, but I might. So I'm going to glue these together. Keeping the one coming from the front going on last. That's it will make for a much more finished look. And I'm going to try to cover that entire tab with glue. Or most of it anyway. All right. Okay, it feels like that's going to stay just fine. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to hold that one down. And I like to wait until I'm ready to glue to cut these tabs back, just so I don't lose track of what I'm doing. And I'm not real particular about which ones I fold down first, as long as that front one gets folded over last. You see what I am doing here. I am going to turn the camera off and I am going to repeat the exact same process with the other two boxes. And when this glue is dry, we will come back and we will start the next step, which is a little more decoration. 
All right, I want to add some ribbon to the sides of my boxes. And if you have eighth inch wide ribbon, use that. I don't have any, but I have a package of quilling paper that kind of came up and exploded all over a drawer, and I'm trying to get it used up. So this is simply eighth inch strips of a lightweight paper that's colored. And I'm going to use this because it will work just as well as ribbon would. And I've got it, and I don't have any ribbon the right color. So I'm putting glue right below that little mark for the half inch where we measured the middle of our box. I'm going to take this up, around. I'm trying to stay under camera and still have this where I can see it. Might have to go get. I brought three of these strips. I think that's going to be enough for everything. And then that one there. I'm going to pull it just a little tighter and then cut it off. We don't need to worry about what the bottom looks like because the bottom is going to not show. And there we go. So we have our first box wrapped in our little ribbon. Now we're going to do this one. I guess it doesn't matter which is top and which is bottom on this guy. Pull it kind of tight so it gets nice and snug on there. And now this one. The letter ones you do have to pay attention to which was your top and which was your yeah, this one and which was your bottom. And you could leave the ribbon off if you don't want to put this on. I'm also going to add a bow made out of this paper to the top, which I think the bow kind of makes this look really finished. Ooh, that was barely enough. There we go. Excuse me. All right. Now we are going to put glue on the bottom. Make sure that your fronts are all lined up. And you can line your ribbon up with the ribbon below it to make sure you're getting this centered. some glue on the bottom of this guy. Oh, I'm gonna when I turn the camera off I can make sure I've got everybody lined up just the way I want them. So I am It looks like we might need to add just a little bit of super glue under this one. This one is not cooperating quite the way I want it to. That's probably more like it. I'll probably have to hold it for a little bit. So I am going to kind of press down on this until the glue sets. That's how it looks. I'll line it up better when I get the camera off and I can turn it around. So when this glue is set up, I'll come back and we'll add a bow to the top. All right, for the bottom row of our bow, I have cut four pieces of, this is more of that same blue quilling paper, and then what I did was I wrapped it around a toothpick, each piece. That way I'm kind of hoping it will already kind of know how to roll. You know, it'll stay rounder. I'm not explaining that very well. but. I'm going to put glue in about the middle, and I'm working on a piece of parchment paper here. That way, hopefully, I won't glue it down to the tray. 
And let's put a dot of glue there. Now, if you can find a pre-made bow, like I know sometimes in the Christmas ornaments, there are bows that are a good scale for miniatures, and you could definitely use one of those. I'm trying to do this. I've got my camera backed up just a little bit uh, from what I would normally do for something this small, but I'm trying to make it so that you, I don't get out from under camera. It's kind of a fine line of getting this where I want, where I can work under camera and you guys can still see. All right, I am going to actually make these, I'm going to glue all four of these the same way, but I'm not going to glue them on top of each other yet. So put glue in about the middle. So I can do this with my nail. I lost my really good locking tweezers when I moved and I can't find them anywhere. In fact, I lost all of my favorite pairs of tweezers. I don't know where they went. the glue is dry. Alright, so I'm going to do the same thing with the rest of these and then I'm going to let this glue dry for a couple of minutes and when it's set up a little bit I'll be back and we will put these together and do the next row. Alright, these guys are glued together and I think they're set enough they're not going to come apart. So now I'm going to put glue right here. And I'm, I'm going to warn you, I am kind of making this bow up as I go, so. I know what I want it to look like when it's done. So, starting with that. Okay. Some more glue in the middle. And then I've got one more here. This one is a one inch piece that I have also glued into a little loopy thing here. And I'm going to attempt to get that in there. piece probably about a half inch long I'm going to attempt to make this into a loop on camera We'll see how well I do. Well, that's kind of a loop. 
Let's see if I can just get glue in the middle. There, I think I've got a bow. Whoops, center of my bow came out, that's okay. I'm gonna let that glue dry, and when that glue is dry, I'll come back and we'll put this on the top of our stack and put it onto the dollhouse porch. All right, I think this bow turned out really cute. So let's go ahead and put it on the top of our stack of presents. To do that, I am going to put a dot of glue. Not too big, you don't want it to squish out all over. And I'm going to put this down on there. And there we are. I love how that looks. Let's go move it in front of the dollhouse over by the front door and we'll see how it looks in place. All right, there's our project in place on the front porch of the dollhouse. I brought out Mrs. Doll so you can kind of see a size comparison. I love how this turned out. It's even cuter than I thought it would be. And it, you saw how easy that was to make in one sheet of paper, two and a half, I think, pieces of quilling paper. If you have ribbon, that'd be even better. And that includes what I used to make the bow. And some glue and some and a couple of pens and that was really all there was to it. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hit the like button, leave me a comment. If you haven't subscribed and you enjoy my content, go ahead and push that subscription button, hit the notification bell so you know when I put up a new video, and I will talk to you next time. Bye!